Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Write or Die show. I am your host, Randy Lee Boslaw. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking to David Nemeth. <laughs> so welcome, David. Super excited to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. And for everyone who is watching and you see this small little part of a face, my child has joined us for today's recording. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and for everyone who is simply listening, well, you don't get to see it, but he's just hanging out in the corner. I so, like Brad. So David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, well, I'm uh, 30 years old, about to be 31. I've got a wife and three kids, um, ages eight, six, and one. Um, so yeah, we're we're all very busy. <laughs> um, but I do a lot of, uh, I, I work at a community college here locally. Um, doing a lot of media and video stuff, uh, video work. Um, but then on my off time, I do a lot of uh, writing and, and directing and, and filmmaking. So Directing and filmmaking yes. too. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. When I was little, I was going to be a famous actor. <laughs> yeah, you're already yelling. Now it's an adult. I simply have a YouTube channel. It's kind of the same thing. It's, a, it's, it's just as good. It really it is. is. I don't get paid the millions. Well, there's but... that. Not yeah. yet anyway. Not yet. Oh, I like that. Not yet. Actually, I keep, I keep telling my husband, well, when my channel starts making millions of dollars, this is what my dream home will look like. <laughs> Let's exactly. be real. Moving's too much work. I'll probably just stay here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there you go. But it's fun to dream. Yeah. Awesome. Um, any pets that we should know about? Um, I just have the one dog. She's, oh, uh, yeah, she's, pretty she's getting old she's a yellow lab she's i think 12 years old this year oh so wow she, she is getting old yeah she's up there okay yes yeah. we have we have a black lab and oh yeah a beagle but he's only like seven but he probably acts like he's 12 because <laughs> he just likes to lay around right <laughs> he's, he's, he's not a playful dog he's a cuddly dog like you can yeah. snuggle and cuddle him to the cows come home but the whole running and playing thing, fetch, what, what's fetch? <laughs> Got it. Tried to teach them, didn't work. Yeah, I yeah. He knows how to do talk. <laughs> yes. So let's get down to business mm -hmm. and let's talk about mental health. <gasps> okay. What mental health have you struggled with? Boy, uh, that's like... That's a. <laughs> I know. I'm just. I'm just ripping the bandaid off. Let's do yeah, it. Let's go. That's, that's what I'll take. Um, nope. But uh, no, I've I've struggled with anxiety and depression for most of my life, um, and up until recently, actually discovered that uh, I, I've been struggling with ADHD as well, um, just oh. undiagnosed. So okay. usually that it's kind of hard to um, uh, it's kind of hard to separate like anxiety, depression, and, and ADHD. It's kind of hard to separate like where one begins and where the other stops and what symptoms are in each, cause they can all overlap. Um, but yeah, that's kind of uh, been what I've struggled with most of my life. Oh, okay. And when did you first notice that it was starting? <laughs> um, I was very little. Um, I was probably in grade school when okay. um, anxiety and depression really started to, to kick in. Um, but then my, my son actually has, um, he has ADHD and he's got a, a, you know, a little bit worse than I had it. Um, okay. so once we figured out that he did looking at him, I was like, see, that's how I viewed the world. That's how I, yes! I saw things. And so it started, things started to click once I knew that it was like, that's what it was. I was like, oh, this world makes sense now. I've had this my whole life. So yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I've sort of been doing the same type of thing, kind of going, oh, that's, just what I did when I was little. Oh, that's just what I do. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay. And how did you deal with it back then? Not very healthily. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got to talk about the unhealthy stuff. Exactly. We talk about the healthy stuff. Exactly. So uh, a lot of my process usually was just, well, let's bury it down um, and let's not deal with it. Let's not talk about it. Um, you know. Uh, just kind of personally, I was always like under the impression that um, emotions aren't aren't good to have, aren't good to feel. So we just we just shove them, we we put them away. Especially with um, a lot of people telling men that you know you can't cry, you can't be open with your emotions, you, yes. you can't do that. 
um, you know, it, in all walks of life, people always tell us that. And it's like, um, so you just shove them all down and you just put the anger on top of it, seal the cage and keep going. Yeah, um, exactly. Until eventually it gets shaken up too much. And goes Exactly. And then it all just comes out and you're exactly. like, well, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing now. Exactly. Um, and then it just leads to all kinds of, of terrible things. So um, yeah, I mean, it was just a lot of shoving it down, not dealing with it and, and trying to move on with my life. But um, eventually it's like, well, you got to deal with it at some point or other. So yeah, exactly. In order to have a good, healthy rest of your life and relationships with your wife, with your kids, you got to deal. Gonna you deal. have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> Three kids is a lot. <laughs> uh, so when did you decide to start dealing with it in a healthy way? Um very recently so um a couple years ago this is um not something i've talked to too many people about but a couple years ago i uh <laughs> it's juicy I, it is i the um, is spilling. i dealt with a, a really low point in my life where um the depression and anxiety were so overwhelming and so large that um many days in a row i contemplated suicide um and uh you, you know what just and it wasn't that I was like man this this life isn't worth living I'm just I, I was just fed up I was done and it was yeah. like I was just so exhausted so tired of fighting so tired of of putting up with the crap so tired of bearing it all under more and more and then eventually you're just like I, you know I, I give up I quit I'm yeah and I think done. I think a lot of people who have never experienced that before so I have also had that mm -hmm. um I think for a lot of people who haven't experienced that before they think that people who have those thoughts are just they're super super sad right but that's not even close to the case it's i'm super super tired and i just can't keep going I, i'm just done you know i or just yeah exactly and um i mean you know there's sadness element to it but i mean i could have yeah. suicidal thoughts while i was still like putting on a smile and, and being with everybody else and being happy and bubbly and, you know, whatever you want to call it, but exactly. Um, but still in the middle of it, you're just like, I'm so, I'm so done. I'm so yeah. done with all of this. Yeah. And um, that was kind of a wake up call for me. So I, I confessed to my wife, I said, um, you know, I've been having these thoughts. I, I've, um, which is, I think that's, that's probably the biggest step that people don't usually take. Yeah is yeah. um, just reaching out. So being able to have uh, my wife and I have a very good relationship. And so being able to tell my wife and be open, be like, look, I've, I, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to do this anymore. And um, saying, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I need help. I don't know. What do you think? And, mm -hmm. and she's, um, you know, she's like, well, if you, if you need somebody to help you, then get the help, you know, go, go do that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, that was kind of the, that was kind of the turning point for me, but I know a lot of people, they don't, they don't get that. Cause, and, and some people don't even have those, those relationships in their life. Exactly. Yeah. I'm same, same with you. I have a very good relationship with my husband. So it was very easy to go and tell him, but yeah, not everybody has that. Mm -mm. No. And it's, it's really hard to be able to reach out to somebody when, I mean, there's a lot of shame that comes with that, you know, yeah. about saying like, look, I, I feel like I want to kill myself and um just to be point blank but you know there's a lot of shame that comes with that and you you're feeling like they're not going to validate that they're they're not they're going to be like oh you're just you're just crazy it'll, it'll pass yeah. you know, just your uh, life is fine so why would you feel this way yeah your life is fine look what you'd be doing to these other people and i'm like i i know i, I know yeah. i know all of this i've thought through all this but it's yeah. it's just i can't i just can't anymore i don't know what to do yeah um and it's a you know, I know a lot of people have spoken on it. I've, I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, it's a, it's a, a permanent solution for a temporary problem. And while yeah. on, yeah, which it is. And while on the surface, you can hear that. And I've heard it time and time again. It's it's just because you hear it doesn't mean it, it sticks and it makes it better. Right. Well, it doesn't make it, it better. No, it, it doesn't solve the fact that you're feeling the way you're feeling. Right. It just is sort of like, great. Now, to me, when I would hear it, now you're just making me actually feel worse right because i'm thinking these things and you're telling me that i shouldn't be and it's like yeah. i shouldn't be feeling the way i'm feeling now i'm feeling worse because i'm wrong exactly so there's a lot you know 
compounded shame on top of that because it's like well okay how do we get rid of me feeling like this which puts more pressure on it and it just you know it's just a, a downward cycle and it's just awful exactly exactly so after you you spoke to your wife what was mm -hmm. your next your next stop on this journey um so then i i went online and i i started looking around for um therapists in the area uh, local therapists in the area mm -hmm. and um and you know it it, it was really hard because it was like i I don't want to trust just anybody with all this stuff that I got oh, going yeah. on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want somebody who's going to be able to, uh, to deal with some of these issues that I have in a sensitive manner and in a way that's going to help me to come out of this and to be able to grow and, and not to just, um, because, um, being a Christian, I wanted somebody who'd actually, you know, come at it from a biblical perspective and a worldview, yeah. but I, however, I didn't want the generic person who'd sit there and just quote me scripture all day and be like, well, the, you shouldn't feel like this because the Bible says like this. And you're like, I, I know that's what it says. Yeah. <laughs> I, Again, uh, what I know and what I feel are two different things. Two different things. So I need like, I need A, I need practical solutions and, and B, it's like, I, I do need the biblical, biblical perspective, but I also like, I don't know. I don't want somebody just kind of it feels almost like they, they blow it off. You know, they're just like, yeah. Oh, well, you know, you shouldn't feel that way because of this. And it's like, well, I, I do. And I yeah. still do. And even if I shouldn't, I still do. And I, I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know how to confront yeah. that. Exactly. Um, so it, it took a while. It took a bit of digging to find um, somebody who thought I thought would be able to handle it. Um, Good. But you found someone. I did. I did. I reached out to them and it was um, I think that was probably a lot more difficult than saying something to my wife. Um, I, I remember distinctly after I, you know, I, all I did was schedule a, an interview. I was just yeah. like, you know, Hey, I'm needing some help. Um, when, you know, when can I see somebody? And they're like, yeah. well, how about next week at this time? Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh, that, that'll work. Sounds good. And, uh, I just remember getting off the phone and, um, for the first time in a long time, I, I was, I just was, uh, I didn't cry too much, but it was, there were some tears and, um, yeah. you know, cause I, again, at that time it was like the emotion welled up and you're like, okay, shove it down. I don't want that. That's bad. Yep. Yep. Um, so I just remember, I, I remember feeling awful and feeling terrible and, and like, I wanted to cry and, you know, just all these, and all I did was schedule an appointment. It yeah. wasn't, you know, but, but on the flip side of that, all you did was schedule an appointment. For those listening on the podcast, I quotation marked that because I'm being fantastic. <laughs> because what you actually did was reach out and ask a stranger for help. Yes. And it admitted that you had a problem. That I had a problem. And I think, yeah, confronting that and saying, I have this problem and I need help. That was, yeah. that's the hardest part. Yeah. Um, and I, I think for a lot of people, because that's the hardest part, that's why they don't do it yes right yeah and yeah. it's as simple as all i did was make an appointment but it's so much it's so more difficult. than that oh. like let's let's not simplify such a no. big achievement because really it is an achievement yeah picking up that phone i mean i didn't even have the strength to pick up the phone i did it all through emails go down to say it out loud <laughs> oh well, i i did initially and then they called okay. me and i was okay, like well, well, that's good. forced that's... to be on the phone <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i did it all through email so there, well that's good but that's just it that step is the hardest one because if you you can't skip that step there's no way around it mm -mm. you have to do it and by doing that step it is full admitted admit, admit to me <laughs> <laughs> that you have a problem you need help with yeah and who wants to admit they have a problem? Right. Yeah, no, and it's, yeah, it was hard. And, you know, even then, um, I think the first two or three sessions with, with the therapist were, you know, I still walking out. I was still in tears and, and yeah. broken up. It was just, it was hard to unload everything. And then, you know, it took, I think it took full two or three sessions for her to actually get the full, the full yeah. picture. Well, exactly. Um, you have this whole big long life and you have like what 50 minutes to an hour to yeah, help somebody just your cram entire it in life. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was like verbal diarrhea, but it still wasn't long enough to get it. No, 
no nope. and then and then you leave going oh, I, I forgot to tell her this I forgot to tell them that right. and ah oh, yeah, they're, they're yeah. they think yeah. I'm the worst and they're gonna judge me and oh it's yeah. just terrible so side note in all of my interviews I wear this beautiful fun fabulous makeup generally I don't ever have makeup or do my hair <laughs> or anything so it worked out well for therapy but for everyone out there that does like to wear fun makeup Maybe when you go to your therapist, don't because you usually end up crying and you'll ruin it all. <laughs> That's good. That's good advice. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just a little side note for everyone. I was like, I wouldn't know anything about that, but you know. Well, that's why I wanted to share it. For exactly. Everybody. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, when you get to therapy, did you get along with this first counselor? Because sometimes it doesn't always work with the first person. Yeah. No. I um I was very blessed. I kind of lucked out. Uh, she's uh, really good. We got along really, really well just from the get-go um, because right. I'm the, I'm a kind of person, I'm, um, I'm a lot stronger than I was a couple of years ago, but uh, I was, I was very weak, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess passive would be close enough, okay. but um, I, I don't, I, I needed somebody to be, to, to give me a swift kick in the pants and to, to not, you know, beat around the bush, not shoot the bull, just yeah. tell me what it is, what I need to do and move on. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, even stare me straight in the face and be like, okay, that's a bald face lie. Try me again. <laughs> you know? Yes. Oh yeah. my goodness. I very much appreciate people like that because yes. when I'm in a depressed state, I am like that very passive. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Although when I'm not, I am that kind of blunt no, this is person, but right. you know, it adds some flow. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes we need it because if we, yeah. if we're always catering to somebody's feelings or emotions, sometimes that leads us to not get to the root of the problem or get to proper coping mechanisms like that we need because yes. we're too worried about making them upset. But that's, one of the reasons I love therapy is that the counselor is not worried about making you upset. The counselor right. is not worried about you crying in their office. They got tissues there. They're ready for you. Right. <laughs> so in fact, it's probably like a little checkbox on their list of things to do and make clients cry. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone I've talked to says that they've cried at least a little bit in a therapist's office. So I think, I think it's part of their training of how to make people cry. Yeah, exactly. But that's just it. You, you're there to release it all. And when we're releasing all those emotions, tears are part of the package. Yeah. Yeah. And they're coming. And like, uh, that's one thing I'm still um, struggling with and still learning how to do is to be able to, um, instead of shoving the emotion down, to be able to sit with them and to be okay with them. And, yeah. um, you know, the, one of the biggest things my therapist has always tried to push on me is that emotions aren't always accurate. So whatever I'm, yeah, whatever I'm feeling, um, and however I'm feeling that a certain situation may be, that may not be the actual truth about what's happening. And so to be able to, yeah, to be able to step back outside, like be okay with the fact that you're feeling that, be okay with like, okay, uh, this, this is the way I'm feeling 100%. That's okay. However, is that the actual situation or am I making too much of this? Um, I love it. So my therapist yes. is something similar, but didn't word it in that way. It mm -hmm. was like, I was struggling with a specific problem and she just kept going. So what is the evidence that this person is going to be upset with you? If you tell them you need to switch your hours at work. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't have any evidence. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, don't call me out. <laughs> but I love the way that you said that, that it, you know, it's okay to feel the way you're feeling, but make sure that you understand that this feeling is, you know, this feeling is here. Mm hmm and reality is over here. We're not quite in reality. We can feel what we're feeling. Say, okay. And now, now let's rejoin reality and realize right. I have no evidence for this. And that's a good way to put it too, is, you know, what's the evidence of this? Because, you know, I, I dealt with the same thing. Why aren't, are, you know, is my employer going to be upset at this? Well, of course they are. Well, how do you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what she just kept saying. So what's the evidence? And I go, yeah. I don't know. Has this person ever been upset with you before if you needed to take a day off? Well, no. So then I returned to my previous question. So then what is the evidence? I don't have any. <laughs> I, I, it's up here. It's all here. <laughs> exactly. It's all in my brain. It's not in reality. Oh, crap. No. It's not in reality, I guess. Yeah. No. Oh, shoot. 
Yep. I guess guess you've solved my problem. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. That was one of the very, very first things that I worked on with my therapist because it's, it's a change in perspective. Yeah. And that shift in that, in your perspective of how this situation is, then starts changing your emotions because you're seeing the situation differently. Exactly. Um, there was a um, there was an analogy that I heard recently from somebody who said, um, you know how like uh, somebody asked him, they're like, I'm not I'm not feeling that way. I know what I should be doing, but I'm just not feeling this certain way. Um, and he said, you know, um, I, I he likened it to to like a very long train where. Um, the actions would be the engine and the emotions or the heart of the problem would be the caboose. And he's like, you keep going and you, you can steer the engine one way or the other. But sometimes it takes the emotions a bit to just come around because you can go off ah. one track, but the emotions are still headed in the same direction that they were. Mm-hmm. But eventually they'll, they'll course correct and follow after the engine. And that was like, you know, that was a, a minor light bulb moment for me. Where, I like it. Yeah, where it's like, you know, at, at some point, sometimes it just takes... And it's, this isn't an all cases kind of kind of deal, uh, but on a case by case basis, sometimes all it takes is just performing the actions that you know you have to do to get better, that you know you have to do to stay well, and eventually the emotions will start to come in line and start to follow after you. Yes. Oh, I like that. That is that is really great insight. So, what other really great insights, <laughs> um, specifically around coping mechanisms? Uh-huh. Do you have to share with us what has worked for you? Wow. Um, there's been, <laughs> it's like little, little things that, that, uh, that just add up over time. One of those is just, you know, just performing the actions and, and letting your emotions come behind. Um, I'm trying to think. I know. I was just like, here's a little question. Actually, it's a big question. It's a giant question. Yeah. Cause it's like, oh, shoot. it's like, I know, I know most of these, but it's like some of them where it's just, you do automatically. And I don't think about, oh, okay, I got to do this and this and this anymore. Um, but at the beginning, it wasn't automatic. Was it, it wasn't always easy. No. no. Um, so what are those ones? One of them has been, um, uh, as far as like depression and anxiety goes, uh, one of them, one of the big things has been setting boundaries in my life, um, which is just, it's a hard thing to do. But, um, you know, when, when it came to um, places like uh, church volunteering or, um, you know, my in-laws asking me for a favor, or friends asking for favors, anything like that, um, back, back when I was a lot more of a yes man or, you know, my boss asking me to do extra work, wh- whatever it is, a lot more of a yes, man. And yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, whatever. Um, but it led to a lot of depression and anxiety because I would overload myself. I would yes. do something I didn't want to do. I'd say yes to something that I'm like, I have no intention of doing this, or I don't want to do this. This isn't something which, you know, sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do, but there's, yeah. but there's like, you know, those extenuating circumstances where it's like, you do have a specific choice choice of, do you want to, or do you not want to? Exactly. Um, like, Hey, you want to help me move this weekend? Eh, yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> it's like, but you'd, you know, I'd say yes to that. Absolutely. I'll be there. I'll help you yeah. move. You know, I'm going to be a great guy. I want to help, help everybody out. But then, uh, you know, you're like, shoot, I've got this, I've got five obligations on top of each other. I should have said exactly. no to one thing. And then, then the anxiety builds up and the depression on top of that. And then you just feel like a terrible person. Cause even though you fulfill all those obligations, you didn't do them well, or you, or because you were so anxious about all of them and you were stressed about all of them, you started to mouth off to people during some of them. And, you know, there's just a lot of things that can happen when you say yes to absolutely everything. So, um, or even, even in the case of I've got three kids, a lot of times I would say yes, or maybe um, when they'd ask me for something, when at heart, I had no intention of following through, yes. um, which is just, you know, makes me feel like a terrible parent and a terrible person. Yeah. Um, my mom it, was famous when I was little. Sorry, side note. Oh, go ahead. My mom was famous when I was little that if I'd ask her something, she would go, oh, maybe. And I knew that she actually meant no, but didn't want yep. to say no, yep. because for whatever reason, she didn't want to say no. But once I eventually caught on to that, I'm like, you just mean no. Right. So she was right. getting the no reaction anyways. Right. Even though it was just maybe it felt better to her, but it was like it's, yeah. there's it's still well, a it, no. It worked for a while until yeah. it caught on. But right. Yeah. 
Sorry, right. side, side notes. No, that's that's <laughs> perfect. I mean, that's a great example. And um, like, yeah, so it was like, well, I had no intention of following through just like that. You'd say, oh yeah, maybe. And it's basically just shove it to the side. I'll deal with it later. And then you never deal with it. And so it becomes exactly. a no. Yeah. And so one of the biggest things I've had to learn is just how to set those boundaries and be like, okay, you know, objectively look at something. And if someone asks for help, okay, I might not only am I capable of doing it, but do I have the time? Will I be able to do this for you? Um, will I be able to, to help you out? And, um, you know, when my kids ask, ask me for something, Hey daddy, can we watch a movie tonight? You know, I, I won't be like, Oh, maybe, or, you know, go ask your mom, whatever. If I have no intention of letting them, it's just going to be a solid, absolutely not. You know, yeah. no, we're not doing that. Yeah. And, um, you know, which is, which is healthy for them. Cause they know now that when I say no, that's exactly what I mean. And that I don't, I don't, flinch from that and when I tell them maybe that means come back in a little bit and ask me again and they yeah. will and then I will have a no or a yes for them yeah. um and you know it, things like that that are very healthy for them to grow up with and yeah and, um, and that's a great point it's healthy for them to grow up with and it's healthy for you to be able to do it yes so exactly for everyone who's listening I mean see the interconnectedness of when we take care of ourselves we show our kids and our re- other relationships is probably better with your wife too and co-workers yeah. or whatever it extends to all sorts of other relationships in our life where we take care of ourselves yeah and the and the when i when taking care of myself being able to learn how to cope with those things um, i can pass that on to my kids everything that i've learned and um, you know deal with things so that when they're when they're angry and upset or when they start crying we don't I don't uh, just immediately, okay, stop that. You don't need to be doing that. You know, it's all right. Hey, kids don't cry. Right, exactly. It's okay. I understand you feel that way. and It's perfectly all right. A, what you do out of that emotion, that's what makes the difference. Um, So it's like, if they're angry, okay, you're fine being angry. That's fine. You can sit there and sulk and be angry all you want. Yeah. But if you start yelling at us, that's where where it becomes a problem. Exactly, exactly. And that's such a good point is, we're allowed to be upset. Yeah. You're not allowed to yell at somebody. You're not allowed to hit somebody. Right. Right. You can have your emotion. Definitely don't hit. Somebody. But you need to understand there is a line. There's a line. You cannot. Line. You cannot cross this. Or if yeah. you know if they're if they're crying or sad about something, or if they hurt themselves, a lot of times my my son will hurt himself, but then he'll um, overextend the um, the crying and the screaming oh, from yeah. hurting himself, and you're like, okay. Oh yeah. The drama of it all. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you're like, yes, it did hurt. I get that. Pull it back, though. You're that's a, that's a bit much. Yes, um, exactly. Oh, so, you know, it's not that the emotion itself is bad. It's just that he's trying to get the attention and trying to gain the, you know, the drama. And the, yeah, yes, and the sympathy. Like, yes. okay, you had it, and then now you. And then you lost it. You lost it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So, yep. So those are, see, even though you're like, there's stuff I do automatically and maybe you do that automatically now, but that is such good information for somebody who's yeah. just starting on this journey. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And it's just, you know, you don't think of that the, the farther you get through there, you don't think of all those little things that you've added. Yeah. But all those little things you've added, like you said before, it adds up to a really big change. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's where we have to start. We have to start with small changes, right? Like, I don't, so I'm a personal trainer. I don't tell somebody, go, go and do hundred pound kettlebell swings right. when <laughs> they have not got up off the couch in the past year because of COVID. Right. <laughs> That's just totally unrealistic. Life yeah. on the alley. So it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing with our mental health. You can't just tell somebody, oh, change your perspective and your thinking. That doesn't if, work. <laughs> no. If, if they haven't been able to sit with their emotions and understand their emotions and understand where it's coming from and is there evidence <laughs> right right it, it it all it's a journey it's a process that we yeah. have to learn yeah absolutely yeah. do you have another real good one that that, <laughs> that you use I, that one was just so good and juicy Oh, thank you. Um, You're like, oh, now I have to top it. You I know. Don't, no, you I don't have, have to, to top it. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, I, I'm just trying. I'm trying to think back to like, like you were saying. You know, people just starting out and um, just kind of the things that that helped in the beginning. Um, but I, you know, honestly, other than you know, 
not only, I guess, not only the initial reaching out, um, but being able to have, um, being able to have somebody that you can rely on for support while you're, if once you're getting help. Um, So for me, that was uh, both my wife, I would be able to come after therapy sessions and and talk to my wife about things and kind of process a few things, Um, but also my older sister. Um, And she's, you know, she's uh, been one of my biggest advocates to, to get some personal help. And, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't told her everything, but um, I'm sure now she'll watch this and listen, but uh, (laughs) excellent. (laughs) There you go. Uh, Fill in the blanks, but, um, but uh, no, she's been a a very big advocate for me, um, both her and my wife. And, uh, you know, a lot of times after, after session, I would would reach out to my wife or, or my sister or both. And, um, you know, just be like, look, I I had trouble with this particular thing and, and, or with this. And sometimes my sister, um, having grown up in the same home, you know, kind of some of the, some of the stuff that I've dealt with as as far as the depression with, um, you know, the way, the way I went to school and stuff like that, you know, we went to the same school. So a lot of that, she can kind of help out with, um, a little more than my wife can. Um, but, uh, just cause she wasn't there at the time. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'll reach out to her and that, that helps a lot. And I'm able to, to talk to her about some things and to, to process some things. So, and, it, and, you know, a lot of times she'll just say, it's okay. You know, that's, that's perfectly all right. You're feeling that way. And that's totally fine. You know, uh, recently I just told her that I was like, you know what, today I'm just not, I'm feeling really down. She was asking how I was. I'm like, I'm feeling really down. She's like, well, that's normal. You're fine. You know I mean? You'll, you'll be okay. And, and you're very strong. And she was very encouraging, but but didn't look over the fact that it was like, you know, I was feeling down. She's like, yeah. it's okay that you feel that way. Allow that to happen. But, you know, I'm, you know, and then she added some encouragement on top of that. Yeah. Um, but to be able to have somebody like that in your life really helps. And if you don't have somebody in, in your life like that, I promise you there's absolutely somebody out there. Um, and all it takes is the same thing as reaching out to a therapist. It's just reaching out to somebody who, who um, it's taking a chance. You know, you, you, might be like, well, I don't know if I can trust them with this. I don't know if I can trust them with that. Um, but being able to take that chance and uh, be vulnerable for just a, you know, a little yeah. bit, um, it, it, it helps so much in the long run to be able to do that. And, yeah. you know, you'd be surprised to, to see how many people out there are actually a lot more supportive than, than you'd think. Sure. A, lot of the, a lot of the louder people um, who are very, the people who are against, you know, and have the stigmas uh, uh, against mental illnesses yeah. are usually a lot louder about it than yeah. the people. Who don't. Yeah, um, that's why I'm starting to be louder. Exactly. There you go. And so, you know, usually it's just finding those people who aren't as loud about it. And yeah. um, a lot of them will be a lot more supportive. And even if they don't, my wife doesn't fully understand everything I've gone through. Um, yeah. And if somebody who supports you doesn't need to fully understand it no. because to be honest, I mean, somebody who hasn't experienced it can't fully understand it. Yeah. Just like I can't fully understand somebody that has schizophrenia. Right. But it doesn't mean I can't support them. Right. You can't be there for them. Yeah, you know, you're there for them and you can and help them and walk through it with them. And, and my wife has done that. And she's like, and I have absolutely no idea what that feels like. But yeah. what do you need from me? You know, <laughs> exactly. It's like that's, that's the best. I just had a, a thing pop into my head. Um, so my my grandson, he loves Frozen, Frozen mm-hmm. Two, everything Frozen. So we've watched Frozen Two a bajillion times, and I I reference this movie a lot just because it plays in my house so often. Right. But for anybody who hasn't watched it yet, I'm sorry. I'm going to spoil a little bit for you. <laughs> but um after Elsa and Olaf have you seen it you might want yes to hear it. Okay. no I'm fine I'm so fine. after Elsa and, and Olaf die and Anna is left by herself and she's singing her well, depression song really which I love that song it's good. um but then she's running from the rock giants and, and Kristoff comes and sweeps her off her feet he goes what do you need he has no idea what she has just been through, no idea what she is feeling, just like your wife doesn't understand fully your situation, right. but it's, what do you need from me? What do you need? I'm here. What do you need? Mm-hmm. So that line from the movie, you know, it just, it speaks volume. It speaks volume about love because it's not being a macho. It's just, I'm here for you, but it speaks volume about helping somebody, even when you don't understand it yourself. 
Because exactly. We don't have to understand it ourselves in order to help somebody else. Exactly. We just need to know what they need from us. We've got yeah. a lot of trauma together. So, <laughs> I, I love that movie. Anybody who hasn't yeah. watched it, I've said it before, watch it. For adults, it's just that kids movie has so many nuggets of mental health wisdom in it. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm just, I'm blown away every time I watch. And now, I mean, I pretty much know it word for word now. Right. Um, but when we first started watching it, so it was the only thing that would calm him down when he was teething. He's only a year and a half, right? So when he was teething, it was the only thing that calmed him down. And so every time you'd watch it, you'd kind of like sort of watch it because you don't really care. But right. I catch something else, and then I catch something else. I'm like, oh, this is actually a really, really good movie. Now I just want yeah. to watch, like, actually absorb it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and you know, uh, the other one that I I love, my kids have watched a lot of times. So we watch Frozen too, I don't countless times too. My oldest is a she's a girl, and um, my my middle child's a boy. He, they both love it. They're just like, let's watch it's that just again. Such a I, good movie. <laughs> they have a great time. Um, uh, being a filmmaker, I do also appreciate how pretty it looks. Yeah. But um. But uh, no, the other one I love was, was uh, Pixar's Inside Out because yes. um, that one really modeled for me just what it looks like to um, to be able to just sit with your emotion and to be able to just, you know, it's, it's not because like there's that one scene where um, the imaginary friend is crying and Joy is all like, well, stop crying. Just move on. Let's just keep doing yeah, this. Yeah. Let's go. And here's a happy thing and put on a happy face and just move on. And then uh, Sadness just comes and sit down next to him and just talks to him for a minute and then lets him cry, lets him deal with it. And then he gets up and moves on and he's fine. You know, yes. that maybe not fine, but you know, it's, it's like, all right, I've, I've better. let out what I need. Better. He, yes. He's better. He's not, better. he's not perfect yet. Not perfect, but it's, better. I've, I've let out what I needed to get out. And, yeah. and so, you know, he's able to, to cope with it and move on. And it was like, you know, one of those moments where you're like, oh, okay. So it's just, you just need to sit with it for a while, acknowledge that it's there and, and be okay with that. Let it happen for a little while. And then you know, and you'll be better for it. Exactly. Yes. Um, so we're going to start wrapping up. Yes. But first, of course, I love asking this question to people. What would you tell somebody who is currently struggling with their own depression, anxiety, ADHD? Um, <laughs> what's your advice to them? Oh, geez. Uh, what's my advice? Um, I think, honestly, the biggest one is kind of... Um, oh. I, I, hate to beat a dead horse but i think the biggest the biggest one is, is simply just reach out make sure you've got other people around you um and i know it's it's super scary and you know there's a lot of shame that goes into that and um a lot of times you think well no one understands what i'm going through no one will will understand um and they'll just think of me as weird they'll they'll look down on me they'll think less of me um but it actually takes a great deal of strength to be able to reach out and uh there's an incredible amount of strength there and once you do that, I'm, I mean, I'm living proof of it. Um, I don't deal with depression uh, as much anxiety up and down, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, we're, we're coping with that. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the strength that's, that's there and the strength that comes with reaching out and just to be able to say, look, I'm dealing with this. Um, I don't know what I need, but I know that I need help. I can't do this alone. Yeah. Because um, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that we're made to do this alone, that we're made to do any part of life alone. Um, and uh, the strength that comes from being able to reach out and being able to um, come alongside with other people or just saying, look, I need you to come alongside with me for now. I'll help you later. But like right now, I, if nobody helps me, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm hopeless. Um, and so, you know, just being able to, to understand that it takes a great deal of strength and that it's not coming from a place of weakness to reach out, but it's coming from a place of strength. Yeah. I love it. And it's not beating a dead horse. It's reiterating a <laughs> Reiterate. super important Very point. Very much so. And ensuring that everyone really absorbs that point. Yes, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about your books so that people can find them, get their hands on them. Well, um, by everyone. Uh, most of my my books are still manuscripts. Um, I do have some some films that are out there, um, some short films, and we've got a feature that's coming out. Um, if you want to look at all of our stuff, is on uh, seventhsummit.tv. So seventh Excellent. with the little th yeah. summit.tv, um, and you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well as that website. 
Um, and all of our stuff is on there, all of our films. So, and all of the films that are on there were written by myself. So there's yeah. one that actually deals with um, more or less the mental illness and the depression and stuff like that. And it's called Down. It's one of our more recent ones. Um, cool. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great deal of, uh, it's, it's a very mental struggle, that film. So it's a little, mm, cool. um, so it's a one to check out. Yeah, that is fabulous. Yeah, being a screenwriter is still being an author. Right? Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. Um, so awesome. So people need to go to that website, check out those those films. Mm -hmm. And where can people find and follow you? Find and follow me. Um, I think, I believe I'm on- uh, Like not stalkery, but- you know. Right, you know, we don't want to do stalkery. I mean, you can find me on Facebook. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm, uh, <laughs> my handle is the one true nerd night, night with a K. So yeah, that's fantastic. I'm totally judging. No. Absolutely. And I will welcome that judging. That's fine. That's like, I'm a big nerd and I, I own that. That's good. Mine. That's what you got to <laughs> own it. I I'm it. own it. Um, Work so yeah, it. The one true nerd night with a K. Um, and uh, I don't think I'm much, I'm very active on Twitter anymore. I used to be, but it's just. I don't, uh, I don't really. Twitter. Yeah. Twitter's gotten ugly. So. Yeah, I don't know. My kid watches a lot of YouTube and we just see like the, the mean tweets or like people making fun of other people's tweets. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I know, I know. It's just, you know, there, there's some really good sides of Twitter and some really yeah, awful Twitter. sides. So yeah. I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm good. Exactly. <laughs> so, so all of those links will be down below so you can give him a follow. Creepy. Um, and Thank you again, David, so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me. You're so welcome. I hope everybody enjoyed that episode and that, that small coping skill that he was talking about, which is actually a huge coping skill with setting healthy boundaries. Wow. And that was one of the hardest parts for me as well. And you know what? As much as he said it's something small and now it's just natural, it is so hard to do before you know how to do it. So if that's something that you're struggling with, know that that's okay. And lots of people struggle with it, but we're making progress. We're working on it. Um, be sure to check out our merch store. 10% of the proceeds do go back to the Canadian Mental Health Association unless you purchase from the special line and then it will go back to addiction services. As well, hit that like and subscribe button here at the channel. Be sure to get all of the notifications for all of the new episodes because you do not want to miss out on all of these amazing guests that we have. And remember, the only way to end the stigma of mental health is to speak openly and honestly.